come. If you see the absolute need, and I hope you do, for baptism being done correctly, uh, again, you can send an email to us. That's baptism at truthofgod.com. Now, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to San Francisco, New York, to London, England, to Queensland, Australia, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Worldwide Truth of God radio program. Here now is our leader, teacher, guide, and messenger of the Almighty God, Pastor Gino Jennings. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith. Yes, yes, one Lord. I'm glad that one. Yes, there's one. from First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Our international address is 5105 North 5th Street in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the wicked country of America <clears throat> where you always are welcome to come, stop in and repent of your sins and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins and God promised to fill you with himself, the Holy Ghost. That's a beautiful promise, isn't it? It looks beautiful this Tuesday evening and you know, when you see these mountain folk each night, you get the days mixed up. 
This has been a beautiful closing year conference. We thank God for all the ministers. And I want to thank my family for the wonderful presentation. And me and my wife. <clears throat> One of my sons is not here. He's at work. Amen. But we're glad for all of you that are here. And we've been having a wonderful time. Souls been going down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ every night. Every single night. So we are grateful to you that are watching upstairs uh, and to you that are watching around the world. This broadcast is dedicated to all the believers and followers of the truth of God. <clears throat> and this is even dedicated to the unbeliever. That after he hear it, he may consider it and obey it and become a believer. <clears throat> well, God been good to us 2019 and he have given the truth of God just victory in every city, every state, every town, every country, every continent. Every place where the word of God have been, God gave us victory all the time. Souls are turning to this message by the thousands. And uh, it's kind of funny when you think of it. When we came to this campus, we had some room. In the gymnasium, we had a little bit of room, but we had some. We don't ran out of room here. And brothers used to tease me and while we were working and they were coming to the main auditorium and say, look, Pastor Jennings, you know by the time we get in the main auditorium, there's not going to be no room. And it's the truth. We don't ran out of room and we're not even in there yet. So I met with our architect to design and build two more balconies. One to the left, one to the right. And they're gonna be already full when they're done. We give God thanks. I thank God for all the faithful. <laughs> all the faithful and dedication from all of the ministers that are present to all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ in Malawi and Tanzania and Kenya and Mozambique and the Ivory Coast and Zimbabwe and Zambia and Barbados, Trinidad, Trinidad, Tobago, the Bahamas, Jamaica, you that are in the Netherlands, Holland, England, Throughout Great Britain, you that are in High Wycombe, England, Frankfurt, Germany, Dusendorf, Germany, yes. India, Alinga, Mauritius, Rodriguez. There's so many areas that I can't remember all of them. But it's the Lord's doing. <laughs> How God took one strong, firm message and shook the devil kingdom here on earth. God did that for people to come from thousands of miles. Baptized a brother last night all the way from the state of Wyoming. Come in to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They hear from New Zealand, Australia, and so many other parts of the world. They flew in from Japan and went down in water during this blessed holy convocation. So we are grateful. I want to greet all of our brothers and sisters and followers of the truth of God in the Philippines. Uh, we are working now, Gray, to put a local telecast covering all the Philippine islands. People are crying out, 
for the word of God to come there in person. And God be our helper, Paul said, this will I do if God permit. Brothers and sisters and stubborn viewers, I thank God for this message, how tough it is. And uh, the message that God blesses to preach about the Trinitarian lie. Oh my God, if you read the comments on internet, Trinitarians are cussing. Brother Tony Harvin didn't waste no time to download it. He didn't waste no time. And uh, Trinitarians is blowing up his website. Website. <laughs> One man said, Pastor Jennings opened my eyes and preached it. Trinitarian respond, Pastor Jennings ain't preached SH. After he got through cussing, he started quoting scripture. <laughs> They call me the Antichrist because we don't believe in the Trinity. I most certainly do not. Amen. 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 They're all over the internet trying to turn the people away. Some went as far as saying, Pastor Jennings don't believe in Jesus. And all these thousands are going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Trying to turn the people. One, whoever was here during the meeting, they post how they got baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, a Trinitarian got upset. Don't you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Trinitarians all over the internet and people who hate the message telling folk, stay away from Geno Jennings. This is where the devil tricked you. It's not Geno Jennings. It's not me. Let me burn you up. My father is greater than I. That's right. Amen. That's right. I'm in the father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the father is in me. Jesus promised that I will do more work than him. Greater works. <laughs> he promised that. That's right. Oh, you know they cussing now. They cussing now. They cussing now. That's right. Let me get some Bible. In St. John chapter 14 and at verse 12. John 14 and 12, Jesus said. Verily, verily, I say unto you. Verily. Truly, I say to you, he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, the works that I do, shall he do also, shall he do also, and greater works than and these, more works than these, shall he do, shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Viewers, amen. You that hate this, listen to what I'm about to tell you. By God's permission, Truth of God had baptized more people than Jesus did. That's right. That's right. But we doing it by the power of Jesus. That's right. Amen. So when people go around telling you that man don't believe in Jesus, it isn't a program that you can turn on where we don't preach Jesus. That's right. And him crucified. What do you think all these folks running here for? Amen. Jesus got in behind them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. This is the truth of God. It's a blessing. Amen. I want to greet all of us. I got an invitation. They're asking us to come to the ancient city of Greece. A city called Areopagus. Wow. Areopagus. They asked us to come there and bring the word of God there. Amen. They want us to come to Rome. I would love to go to Rome. Amen. Right in the Pope's backyard. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Take his red shoes down in water. <laughs> oh, it takes. 
God in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. I mean, viewers actually hate those that love the truth of God. Not all people hate them, but there's so many of them. So many <laughs> truth of God followers around the world. Wonderful. You can hear them logging on. Kenya logging on. Ethiopia logging on. Greece logging on. I want to greet First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ on the Island of St. Lucia. Yeah. Pastor Richards and all the saints there. We thank God for you. Yeah. This is the best thing. It's the best thing. And uh, it's just the beginning of it. Yeah. When I tell people that, they always give me that look. Pastor Jennings, all these churches and all, it's just the beginning of it. I can tell you this because I know that God Almighty has showed me this great thing many, many, many years ago. That's right. I didn't eat beans and lay down and had a gassy vision. <laughs> I had a real vision from God. That's right. When Williams and I was in our early teens and my wife was in the early teens and brother Mike Ravenel. Mm -hmm. I was 14, 15, and 16, mm -hmm. telling them about today. That's right. I wasn't Pastor Jennings. That's right. I was just Nick or Gino. Yeah. But the Lord showed me this. Amen. The Lord showed me this, this. in a vision. That's right. Never told me when. But the vision was the only thing as a young man that kept me from backsliding. Yes. Because one thing about falsehood, when God starts opening your eyes and you want to get out of there and then don't know where to go. That's right. That's the thing that kept me. I remember I told my father about it. He said, son, if that's what the Lord showed you, I'll, I'll wait and see. Told Brother Mike Ravenel, he said, well, I'll be glad when it start because I'm tired of being here. <laughs> when everybody left the false church, it was down to three people. Me, Williams, and my wife. We wasn't married then. She was still Sister Gaiman. That's right. Mm-hmm. She was an usher, and there wasn't nobody to usher. Amen. <laughs> and when me, Williams, and her would be there once in a while, then some of them that got tired of the foolishness left, they would drift in and see how we doing. Otherwise than that, it was just us three, and you would think the place was packed. That's right. That's right. We preached by God's permission, and what God opened our understanding to, he wouldn't move. The false prophet told me, God ain't showed you nothing. Amen. I told him about what the Lord showed me. And the international broadcast. Mm -hmm. And a large headquarters church. I mean, I'm telling him this. Churches around the world, traveling around the world. Souls by the thousands. He said, God have not showed you or told you anything. I didn't respect, I didn't disrespect him. I just sat quiet. Yeah. He said, if I don't raise my hands over you and bless you, it ain't nothing going to happen. He said, only a fool will follow you. <laughs> well, thank God for the thousands of fools. <laughs> He said, if God told you so much, where did God tell you this work going to start? Where are you going to go if you leave here? I said, I don't know. He said, you see that? God never told somebody to go somewhere and don't know where they're going. I said, he told Abraham. By faith, Abraham. The Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 11 and at verse 8. Hebrews 11 and 8 says. By faith Abraham. By faith Abraham. When he was called to go out he into was a place. called to go out to a place. Which he should after receive for an inheritance obey. Uh -huh. And he went out. He went out. Not knowing whether he went. I told you. That's right. Didn't have a clue. That's right. Where we would get started at. I had no clue. 
told my mother and father about this. My father said, you can start right here in the basement. We had no chairs. Cleaned out the basement and there was an old mother, Mother Armstrong. Gave us some chairs. And we cleaned them up. Set them up in the basement. And I think my brother Rick wrote, he drew a church sign. With red and black magic marker. That's right. Set it on the wall and back of the makeshift pulpit. For a podium, my mother let me use one of the dressers of the house with the drawers full of clothes. She got an old tablecloth off the coffee table, covered it up. Our first keyboard, remember the old the Casio keyboard about that big? <laughs> We had a little Casio keyboard. And Sister Sabrina Hunter was my first keyboard player. And she's still playing. That little keyboard, her fingers was moving. <laughs> and we were faithful. We started out with about 12 to 15 people. The basement was our headquarters and we start working in 13 other areas of the country. That's right. Preaching to three people here, five people there, two people there, four people there, seven people there. We had three members in Detroit. No, four members in Detroit. And I started catching the plane every month, once a month. Then we had members in Illinois. I was catching a plane every month. Yeah. Amen. The ones of Detroit, there was elderly brothers and sisters, they died out. Now we're back in Detroit with the new Detroit Temple. God taught me the value of small things. We had one member in Fredericksburg, Virginia. I didn't have no license then, but I knew how to drive. I, you know, I had my permit and I kept renewing it. We didn't have no church van or nothing like that. So Mother Armstrong had a 1970 or 1971 Malibu Chevy and gave it to the church and that was our transportation. We was on the train every month preaching to one member in Fredericksburg, Virginia, for 10 years, That's right. preaching to one member. Amen. God was teaching me that if you can't be faithful with few, you cannot be faithful with many. We was dedicated to that one. Many times baptized in the dead winter, outdoors, and broke ice with no boots. That's right. In the winter time. That's right. Standing there, shaking. I remember my brother, Antoine Jones. I thought I saw him. Antoine, you here? Raise your hand. There he is. He's a professional swimmer. Yeah. We was in Fredericksburg in the winter time. Down there, there was a big body of water, cold. And folks wanted to be baptized and ice was on the water. Antoine said, look, let me go in front of you so I can measure the water. He took a stick and then he said, right here is good. And it was freezing. I kept asking him, Antoine, you all right? He said, I'm all right. I asked him again, Antoine, you all right? He said, the feelings of my legs are gone. He didn't have on baptismal gear. 
He had on sweatpants and a t-shirt in the wintertime. I didn't have no baptismal boots. I had on a pair of pants and a shirt and baptizing. Amen. You cannot, hallelujah, glory to God. If you can't be faithful with a few, you will never be able to maintain many. When God showed me this work, I thought that it would start right away, just a big blow up of hundreds. Mm -mm. I was in the basement. We were there for five years. And uh, in the back of the basement, there was a kitchen. And we get big pots of water, <clears throat> turn it on early in the wintertime. And when you're down there praying, the pipes will sweat. And when the water drop on you, you think something is on you. <laughs> that water put a lot of folk in the spirit. <laughs> folks would be down there praying, calling Jesus looking. <laughs> Amen. Many from the basement, from the basement, we baptized over 350 souls from the basement. Now I, I think of this. We baptized over 350 souls in five years' time. Now we can baptize 350 souls just going on one trip. That's right. That's right. We baptized over half of that last month in Africa when we baptized 192 in two days. Yeah. <clears throat> so God gave the increase. <clears throat> Not Pastor Jennings. Viewers, the devil make you look at me. That's right. It's not me. Take your eyes off me. The devil will do anything to keep you from obeying God. That's right. Make you look at me. Make you look at how I sound. Make you get mad at the, comp the comments that people make because the word of God have changed them. <laughs> One uh, sister said, I don't know who she is from what part of the world. She said, I was raised a Trinitarian all my life, but hearing this message have opened my eyes. Now I know there's one God. A Trinitarian got upset. How do you know there's one God? Stop listening to Gino. My Lord. Everybody stop listening to Gino. <laughs> there used to be a restaurant in the 70s <laughs> called Gino's, remember? Yeah. The commercial song, everybody goes to Gino's. <laughs> Geno's is the place to go. <laughs> Amen. This thing is from the Lord. So as the work began to grow, different ones began to come in from different locations. And I remember certain ones when they came in, how different things stand out. I remember when the Richardson family came, burning, Rome, and Karen. How can I not remember that? <laughs> I believe we were in Salisbury or either Landover, Maryland. Vernon was in the front with the Bible this size. And they walked through the doors all in one long line. Yeah. And he came walking in like he's some bishop sat down and opened this Bible up. <laughs> Boy, and God went to work. When God went to work, he closed that Bible right up. God gave all of us a testimony. Oh, yes. How the Lord brought us into the truth of God. Right. One testimony that I find amazing. And I find this testimony coming from hundreds who don't know each other. Everywhere I travel, people have come to me and said, I never even heard of you. But somehow you popped up on my phone. Never heard of you. I wasn't a church person. 
you popped up on my phone. You know, God know how to give it to you. That's right. Giving you a chance to get right with him. That's right. Viewers, that's what God had this program for. That's it. We have watched it develop. <clears throat> God showed me our broadcast. <clears throat> Let me show you. I bought broadcast, broadcast equipment, and I didn't have no broadcast. I was still in the basement and brought broadcast equipment, a 20 band equalizer, <laughs> everything, top of the line equipment. My brother Rick said, Gene, why you buy all this? I said, this for our broadcast. He said, we ain't got no broadcast. I said, I know, but we will. <laughs> I bought a big lighted church sign to go on the headquarters that we didn't have. That's right. Big sign. I had it in my mother's basement, leaned up against the wall. She said, is that going on the outside of my house? <laughs> I said, no. I said, this is for the headquarters church. She said, son, we ain't got no headquarters church. I said, but we will. Yeah. She said, but how do you know? I said, we will, I said, we will. <laughs> and that sign set up against the wall. And that was the sign that used to be on the parking lot of Frankfurt Avenue. Yeah. That was the sign that I bought from the basement and had no church. That's right. Amen. That's right. God made the truth of God a light to the world from Frankfurt Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> Lord our God done a lot of wonderful things. Amen. I love to talk about what God done for us. Many, some viewers don't like it. Uh, one fella got so mad at me, he said, 45 minutes, and all he's doing is talking about what God done, and I don't hear no Bible being read. Glory <laughs> 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 to God. I have to testify. Testify. <laughs> That's right. Testify. With many other words, did he testify and exalt saying, save yourself. Yeah. Glory to God, I have a testimony. A testimony. God brought us to Frankfurt Avenue. It was an abandoned Baptist church after we left Briar Road. On Briar Road, we rented the recreation hall of an Episcopalian church. And that's where God put us over the radio. In a year's time, he gave us 11 radio stations and an hour on all of them. That's right. And souls was going down in the water and receiving the Holy Ghost by the number. Well, he filled up Briar Road. I went looking for a church by faith. Yes. He blessed us to buy Frankfurt Avenue. And it was tore up from the floor. <laughs> But we went in there and the brothers and all of us got in there and worked and there was no heat in the building. We had that little, that blow heat. That's right. You had to work to stay warm. Lay new floor, put new ceiling and lights in, dedicate the downstairs auditorium and then finally got upstairs. It was on Frankfurt Avenue that God blessed us with the truth of God telecast. Yeah. <clears throat> Outgrew Frankfurt. Yeah. So we went looking for a new headquarters mm -hmm. with no money to buy it. That's right. Glory to God. We wanted to buy one of the high schools in the city because it had the square footage that we wanted, 150 to 200,000 square feet. And I didn't realize it was just so complicated to get a school. So <clears throat> I still wanted between 150 to 200,000 square feet. Catholic Diocese put a commercial out. They're closing a bunch of campuses because of the misconduct of the priests with the boys in the church. People was leaving the Catholic Church and they had to sell off their property to pay for the billions of dollars of lawsuit. 
So they reached out to our church real estate agent. And she gave me a paper full of listings. She said, how many you want to see? I said, plenty. But they never told how long was these places closed. From the outside, the buildings look beautiful. You go on the inside, some was vacant 15 and 20 years. Birds was in there. So we went to several campuses and I was like, no, no, Lord, no. <laughs> and then in 2014, we came here. It's, a, it's amazing how the future is because my high school is right up the street. That's right. And I was coming by our future headquarters and didn't know it. That's right. The music store where we will buy our equipment from is literally walking distance up the street. Yeah. And I will walk by this church, our future headquarters. Didn't know it. So when I came in here in 2014, I asked my brother Rick and my mom, I said, look, y'all want to go see it? And they said, yeah, all right. So we came in here and looked around and Rick said, Gene, this place is huge. How? He said, don't you think it's too big? I said, oh, no. I asked the man, what's the square footage? He said, Reverend Jennings? He didn't know no better. He said, 200,000 square feet. I said, yes. That's what I wanted. I didn't tell the church about it until about two years later. Yeah. I saw it in 2014. I didn't tell the church about it until 2016. I kept coming here, kept coming here, and Praying. Then when we told the church about it, they were so excited. And we asked everybody to cooperate and just sacrifice $1,000 a person towards the purchase of the property. The folks were so glad, they started turning money in the same day. And the Truth of God family raised over a million dollars cash. Amen. We didn't buy no plane. That's right. That's right. That's right. Didn't buy no mansion. Amen. Didn't buy no limousine. We sold before we raised the money. We didn't have no financial commitment from the financial institutions to buy this beautiful campus. So the first financial institution that said they would do it, you know, because financial institutions don't care what you believe. They just want your business. But it's just something about the reputation of the truth of God. Folks just hate it. <laughs> financial institution, they the one called us and say, yes, we'll be glad to do business with you. Then they went on the internet and heard this gospel and called us back and said, we're sorry we can't do business with you. Second financial institution did the same thing. Before we had financial backing, I had to believe God. Yeah. Before we had financial backing, we sold Frankfurt Avenue. We had the former headquarters sold. I signed the agreement of sales, sold it. Yeah. Turned the check over to the financial secretary. She said, but it's sold. We don't own it no more. I said, nah. <laughs> She said, who owned it? I said, developer. We renting from him. <laughs> she said, what? I said, she said, how long are we going to be here? I said, not long. Right. She said, but how you know we, we got the money? I said, Pele. Yeah. She said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, sir. She said, 
I ain't going to ask you nothing. I've been <laughs> knowing you for so many years, and one thing I learned, you believe God. That's right. And, and she put a spin on it. She said, you go on and believe God. I said, what about you? She said, you go on and believe God. <laughs> so then, our closing year service, Before the closing year service and all the saints came together and we was able to raise over a million dollars cash, when it came time to settlement, they had the figures wrong. They said we had to have 700 and something thousand at the settlement table. And then they came back and we had that cashier's check. Yeah. And when we gave it to them, they said, uh, there's a mistake. You short 300 and something thousand. I said, this, this is the HUD sheet. This is what you say we got to have. So we contact our financial secretary. I said, uh, we need another 300 and something thousand. She said, oh, we got it. We raised over a million dollars. She said, money's still coming in. We was able to give it to her, down payment. We had our last service on Frankfurt Avenue that Sunday morning. The brothers rolled up with tractor trailers. After that service, everybody helped load everything up. Tractor trailers come lined up down the street on the campus. Everybody helped unload. We set chairs up and had church the same Sunday that night, That's right, right in here. That's right. Now, God has given the truth of God a message that every place this message goes, we have a congregation. The first time this message gets there. That's right. People are hungry. That's right. Without a vision, the people perish. perish. In the book of Habakkuk, mm -hmm. God spoke to the prophet mm -hmm. concerning what to do in reference to a vision. I'm not talking about making up something. No. Very few people have ever experienced someone telling them, the Lord showed me such and such and such a thing, and it happens. That's right. And, let, and they watch it materialize right in front of their eyes. That's right. Listen at this. In the book of Habakkuk chapter 2, we're starting at verse 1. All right. I will stand upon my watch. I will stand upon my watch. And set me upon the tower. And set me upon the tower. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. Mm -hmm. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me. And said, write the vision. Write the vision. And make it plain upon table. Make it plain upon table. That he may run he that reading. He may run that reading. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Did you hear that? Amen. Every vision that God ever showed has an appointed time for fulfillment. That's right. Every vision. That's right. I don't mean get mad at a preacher and run out and start something. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. no. Oh, no. I mean a vision yeah. from God That's right. and a mission from God. That's right. When God give you a mission and give you a job and call and send you to do it, God will create circumstances yeah. yes. to teach you how to depend on him and not yourself. That's right. God will let things go in your eyes contrary yeah. to what you think. Yeah. Just to teach you how to depend on him. That's right. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Sometime when, when uh, we was in the basement, I was not expecting to be there five years. No. I didn't fully understand the vision. Mm -hmm. 
Because I thought that stuff goes, goes to happen right away. That's right. I didn't ha think I would be in the basement five years no. and then on Briar Road for almost three years. Amen. I thought that this thing was going to happen like when you step out and like God going to drop it out the sky. That's right. Mm-mm. That's right. Didn't happen not even remotely close that way. No. Listen. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables. Make it plain upon tables. That he may run that readeth it. Yes. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Uh -huh. But at the end it shall speak. What? At the end it shall speak. It's here now. It's, that's right. And it's speaking loudly, isn't it? Amen. It doesn't matter who get over the internet and say, oh, God ain't showed him nothing. That don't mean nothing to us. No. That's like arguing with a rich man. You ain't got no money. It'll, it'll be foolish for that rich man to argue with you when he got stocks and bonds and property and money stacked everywhere. It'll be dumb for him to give you the time of day. That's right. Why? He know what he has. That's right. Him and family, yeah. the yeah. truth of God, we know what we have. We have. That's right. We know what we have. That's right. The Bible says, For the vision is yet for an appointed is time. Is yet for an, an appointed, appointed time. time. But at the end, at the end, it shall speak. It will speak. And not lie. And it won't lie. That's right. It haven't lied either. That's right. Wait for it. Though it tarry. Though it tarry. Wait for it. Wait. Hallelujah. 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 Though it linger. Wait. Wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. All right, thank God. Even though the vision is slowly unfolding, there's Amen. many things I'm still waiting for. That's right. That's right. Sometimes I don't believe it. You're too late. Oh, yeah. Yo, unbelief is too late. It's way too late. Oh, he's trying to convince. So, do I now persuade men or is it God? Amen. I'm not trying to persuade you. No, sir. Oh, no. I had a real, I had, God have multiplied visions. That's right. That's he right. didn't give me one vision. Oh, mm -mm. no. Multiply. Gave me many. That's right. Let me see it. Go it. Hallelujah. That's right. I looked at it Hallelujah. and behold Hallelujah. his manner. Hallelujah. Amen. I was told years ago, this would never happen. That would never happen. And you got people, I remember when we got Lily Avenue. <laughs> my, 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 my. Amen. Let me back up. When we was in the basement, when first left, left falsehood, churches that we used to fellowship with was coming by in the basement visiting us, <laughs> saying how they felt sorry for us. <laughs> I remember bishops. That's right. Asked me to come work with them. I said, oh, no. That's right. Hey, Amen. Jumping out the frying pan into the fire, never. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. We had church in that basement. <clears throat> and when we ventured out for this place, men got on internet making little webcasts. Don't give no money to them. They, he just want to be a big man. The Lord told me he'll never have it. Lord. Blaspheme. Blaspheming. Because when God says something, it's going to be like God says. That's right. Don't ever say God said something when he didn't. When he didn't say. Amen. This is a small thing. Yeah. yeah. Lindley Avenue is a small thing. Amen. The vision is bigger than Lindley Avenue. Oh, yeah. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Oh, yes. The vision is bigger. Amen. Than Lindley Avenue. That's right. Amen. That's right. Way bigger. Hey. Huh. Wait for it. Wait for it. For, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Wait for it when you see mm -hmm. another headquarters temple. Huh. Take up the space where about three buildings set. Amen. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait Someone for said, it. I don't see it. You don't have to. That's Wait right. for it. Wait for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah to God. But at the end it shall speak. When we left Briar Road, they didn't see Lindley. Didn't they see Frankfurt? When we left Frankfurt, they couldn't see Lindley. That's right. And now that we're here, mm -hmm. <laughs> I asked God for 150 to 200,000 square feet for a reason. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> for a reason. Amen. Amen. And he gave me exactly what I had. That's right. Exactly. What we had. Exactly. That's right. Amen. That's My right. financial secretary said, I don't understand him. We ain't got no money, but somehow we buy churches. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. I believe God. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. Many times went to places, churches, three, four, five, six hundred thousand. Yeah. I don't know. I don't believe in paying that kind of money <laughs> for branch churches. Amen. I don't want to do that. I go and offer them hundred thousand or ninety-eight thousand or eighty thousand. <laughs> Amen. Like in Mobile, Alabama, we bought a property on Government Street that was over a half million dollars. And by the time I looked at it, it was a little bit below 400,000. I gave him an offer of 40,000. <laughs> Prime, sitting right downtown on the same street where mayors and governors live. That's right. Prime. That's right. Everybody in the city knew what the building was. Prime. Prime. $40,000. They looked at me. <laughs> there was a brother that was with me at the time, Brother Campbell. Yeah. He said, bro. <laughs> he said, when I heard you gave that number, I walked away and just said, look. <laughs> $40,000, that's what I offered him. Amen. I said, now counter off of me. At the time, it was a little bit below 400000 mm -hmm. It came down to about a hundred and something thousand. I said, 41000 yeah. Went up 1000 yeah. By the time we was done wrangling, we agreed to 67,000. <laughs> A lot of work had to be done. And, and my line of business, my wife and our personal business, we flip property. Mm -hmm. And I know about flipping property. Amen. Uh, and I looked at the work that we had to do in Mobile, and I was like, when we got Frankfurt Avenue, I put all the building projects on hold. So we can concentrate on the headquarters. And then I concluded, uh, let's sell Alabama. And I prayed and asked the Lord, bless us with a temple better than this, mm -hmm. bigger than this, where I don't have to do all this work in Mobile. Right. Amen. We bought Government Street for 67,000, sold it for 200,000. Yeah. Amen. Up the plane, went to Alabama, went looking for, I had a, an appointment to look at five buildings. None of them were churches, but you can convert them. Before we got to the first building, he turned off Government Street on the corner of Pleasant Valley Road. There was a big for sale sign. I said, hold it. Yeah. He said, what, Reverend Jennings? I said, stop right here. He said, what's wrong? I said, there's a church for sale. He said, you have no business coming down here seeing the church, and I don't know nothing about it. He said, I live here. I said, I, I got out. I said, I want the city. He said, when? I said, right away. Right. He got on his phone and made a call. He said, do you want to see the other property? I said, no. He said, I'll take you to dinner until I get the keys. We went to dinner, got the keys, went in there, looked around. I said, this is what I want. Yeah. He said, what's your offer? I said, such, such, such a number. He said, don't you think that's too low? I said, no. <laughs> right. 
He said, I've been doing this over 45 years. I said, I've been doing it for 35. <laughs> Not too long. And they accept our offer. Our oak, the building that we sold in Mobile. You have been watching the Worldwide Truth of God television program with the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to contact us in the United States, call us toll free at one 231 2201 in Jamaica, the U.S. Virgin Islands, or the rest of the Caribbean, call 876-963-2093. Again, if you have questions, comments, call us toll-free at one 231 2201 in the United States and 876-963-2093 in Jamaica, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the rest of the Caribbean. You can also email us at firstchurchattruthofgod.com or visit us on the web at truthofgod.com. Once again, our telephone number in the United States is one 231 2201 and 876-963-2093 in Jamaica, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the rest of the Caribbean. Peace be unto all. Attention viewers of the Truth of God and First Church members in New Zealand. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the appearances that Pastor Jennings was to have made for the month of December have been postponed. Services will be held by all local ministers. Again, due to unforeseen circumstances, the appearances that Pastor Jennings was to have made for the month of December have been postponed. Services will be held by all local ministers. Please contact the local minister in your area, or contact Tion Hemo Po at 642-1052-6118 for more information. Join Pastor Gino Jennings for our end-of-year services at the Sheraton Greensboro Hotel, Joseph S. Corey Convention Center, 3121 Westgate City Boulevard, Greensboro, North Carolina. Services are Thursday and Friday, December 29th and 30th, 7 p.m., Saturday, December 31st, 4 p.m., and Sunday, January 1st, 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Rooms at the Sheraton are sold out. Hotel accommodations are available at the Spring Hill Suites, Landmark Center Boulevard, Greensboro. For event information, call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Attention viewers of the TOG.TV, we have expanded our programming schedule. Regular and new programs can be seen Monday through Sunday, 12 a.m. to 7 p.m. On Tuesday and Thursday nights, we'll have French programs from 7 to 9 p.m. and Spanish programs from 9 to 11 p.m. Remember, regular and new programs Monday through Sunday, 12 a.m. to 7 p.m. French programs Tuesday and Thursday, 7 to 9 p.m. and Spanish Tuesday and Thursday, 9 to 11 p.m. Greetings, everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Worldwide Truth of God television program is now on the air and comes to you from the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ with new international headquarters at 5105 North 5th Street on the corner of North 5th Street and Lindley Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the United States of America. In this and all our programs, you will hear the Word of God preached in its purest form from the Holy Scriptures by the Apostle Pastor Gino Jennings. So join us each week at this time to hear Pastor Jennings preach on a variety of subjects, all of which point you to God's call to true holiness. <laughs> For a reason. Amen. 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 And he gave me exactly what I had. That's right. Exactly. What we ask. Exactly. That's right. Amen. That's I right. find out your secretary say, I don't understand him. We ain't got no money, but somehow we buy churches. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Amen. Wonderful. I believe God. Hallelujah. That's wonderful. Amen. Many times went to places, churches, three, four, five, six hundred thousand. Yeah. I don't know. I don't believe in paying that kind of money <laughs> for branch churches. Amen. I don't want to do that. I go and offer them hundred thousand or ninety-eight thousand or eighty thousand. <laughs> Amen. Like in Mobile, Alabama, we bought a property on Government Street that was over a half million dollars, and by the time I looked at it, it was a little bit below. 400,000, I gave him an offer of 40,000. <laughs> Prime, sitting right downtown on the same street where mayors and governors live. That's right. Prime. That's right. Everybody